All right, everybody, on a video request, I've got one for a viewer. Uh, Miss Patricia, uh, this one's for you. Uh, hopefully this helps a lot of people out. Hey, everybody, I've got a viewer who was inquiring on proper setup of a RV refrigerator. Now, this is a more modern unit. You might have an older unit that uses that type of grate, and that's a little beat up. But one of the things that you want to be aware of in seasonal change is how to maintain this for less power, less gas use. In addition, proper temperature setting. Now, this one here comes with some pretty basic information on it. This is a newer refrigerator. And one of the things you want to be sure that you do is there's screws on the top of those caps. Make sure it's clean of bird nest and other things. No debris, no straw from pine trees or pollen buildup on the screens and mesh up inside there. Now you'll just see that there is going to be screws either under the lip or up on top of these vents. That's for the top of the refrigerator, above it. Make sure nothing obstructs that. Secondary, during the winter time, if you're in a colder climate, say north uh, central part of the country or like I'm where I'm at in Idaho or if you're in Nebraska or something, you wanna take and put a piece of duct tape just over the top of the middle one of these so if your temperatures are 40 degrees outside or lower take a piece of duct tape and put across the top of the center of this or you can if you have the old style like this beat up thing you can put them across just a strip you want to reduce the amount of air intake so that the extreme cold doesn't require your refrigerator to take more power now that's the thing you would think that during the cold when it's 10 degrees outside hell my refrigerator is going to work great um, no, it's not. In fact, you're going to have to reduce your temperature readings, um, as I'll show you here in these clips um, coming up. You'll have to reduce your temperature to compensate, to make more heat to create the absorption. Yeah, I got a welder burn right there. So you'll have to do that, and that's going to be something that you don't really have to do much of if you block off now you people up north dakota oil fields they know this secret greatly they'll just take and they'll put a piece of tape over one of these and sometimes one and a half you know if it's zero degrees outside it's not going to be a problem covering one and a half never cover the entire intake flow to that refrigerator ever because it will overheat at that point now Normally, these are thermostatically controlled. They will not technically overheat, but they will create more scouring effect in here because it'll overspeed the gas. That's a absorption refrigerator issue sometimes if they overheat. In other words, if your heating element that's behind here, that's going up against your pipe, literally doesn't have the ability to shut off, it will overheat, overspeed, scour holes in your uh, right <laughs> if i can get up in there right up in your cooling range that's there that's a uh recombiner area that's in the top of the refrigerator now what you have to do is make sure that your adjustments give you the temperature range of zero in the freezer or freezer area if you don't have a freezer area then you don't have to worry about that but zero or close to it um, i usually run them at about 10 degrees down to about negative five that's the smartest way to go. And this one, of course, is new. It's very simple. It's got, you can go download the PDF on it. But one of the coolest secrets is how to make sure that you don't allow your refrigerator to get too cool from outdoors. You don't want that, or it will not allow proper circulation of your ammonia and hydrogen and other materials that's inside this absorption unit. The other thing is, is the settings. Uh, her question was about the settings. How do we do the settings? Well, it's pretty simple. All right. And hey, and you guys that are uh, watching the video on this camper being redone, look at what I found behind a piece of paneling. Look at that. I got enough room to put two big deep cycle batteries back there. No question whatsoever by removing that piece of paneling. And we're going to install a door out there. I'll show you how that's done. Now, this one is a newer refrigerator. It's in good shape. It is hardly used at all. Um, I think they maybe put a few hours on it. The one thing you always want to have is some type of thermometers. I'll show you different ones, and I'll put a link below the video. The best ones, actually, this ain't the greatest one. 
doesn't work great. It's somewhat accurate, but the other ones I'll show you in the link, boom, in the next video section that's in the freezer, those work great. They're compact, they'll hang right here. They're only about that big around, they work. Awesome. Now, they all mostly come with these or sometimes people remove the sticker here, but this refrigerator works best in the summer, set on five, and in the winter, it has to run on six and a half, just less than seven, to maintain the temperature of zero in here, okay? And maintain a temperature of under 40 to above 33 in here. And during the night, they'll vary. These will vary in temperature. So what you wanna do is you wanna wait till the warmest part of the day and set your refrigerator's temperature to go to 37 degrees Fahrenheit for the refrigerator. So start out about 11 a.m., turn it, and then look at it. And these are very sensitive, so you wanna just, I mean, you're looking at some of these quarter turn areas, very sensitive on how they work. So in this one's case, I run it at about what you would figure to be about 5.25, 5.3. That's just a random guess there. On electric, on gas, I will run it at about just under the six, so about 575. So as you turn this up, the higher the number, the more the cooling. Now, in my case, I run it right there. Now, it's going to have this refrigerator that is, uh, we just powered it back up this morning or about an hour ago, and it's, it's real cold now. So they, they do take about six hours to stabilize from the time that you turn them on, and 24 hours to be an adjustable range. So if you want an adjustable range about what you're gonna end up with, as you can see, it's 75 in the shop, so she's dropped down now to about 67. And that's what we're working with, so. But there's your adjustments, and you wanna make sure, like I said, you're gonna work with this to fine tune it. If you're parked, you're living in your RV, or you're traveling in different regions, always be ready to readjust your refrigerator, okay? Now let's get over here and look and I'll show you clips of these other refrigerators and why they work like they do. Okay, now coming in here to this refrigerator. This one here is currently set, let's see here, for summertime. So as you can see, it's a lower temperature right now, but winter is coming on, so I have a mark. Now this is, I just use liquid paper on it and you'll get a mark. You can see a little bit of corrosion here from years of use, but this one here is a quite old unit now. But that one is the wintertime setting, and this is the summer. And what I'm going to do now, because I'm in fall, is I'm going to set it between the two. Now, that's like I explained about needing more heat from your unit in the back to create more cool. In the wintertime, it's going to be drawing in colder air, requiring more heat to have the absorption effect. This one's set on electric, and that means the coil will run longer, the heater element, and that's how that works. Now, if you look inside here, you'll see that I've had the door open here for a second, but temperature inside is just right at 40 degrees, 39 degrees. Now, up here in the freezer, I have it set at negative 10, so I didn't open this door till just now. Down there, it'll be at about 37 when the door stays shut, and for shipping i put this so that my doors don't flip open when i drive this thing or haul it down the highway all right guys so now this over here is a different model this is a more modern unit uh, basically 2005 and newer and it has about the simple features here that you'll just use for temp set the higher the number the more cooling inside you're going to get and of course you can change mode from gas It'll be AC, GS for gas, DC, and some of them will read a little different, but you'll figure them out pretty easy. You can look up the PDFs on most of these just by their model number and year, so they'll give you a lot of details. So it can go on and off, or if you hold the button in, it'll kick it to auto, which will go back and forth from different types of voltage or fuels. So that's a pretty simple setup right there. Now, my big suggestion is if you're going to uh, long-term in an RV, my big suggestion is to go ahead and get one that looks like this one right here. And I'll put a link below the video to it. And it will replace these in size. You could usually get a local cabinet maker to come out and trim fit it, and then you will insulate the back panel uh, closed, except for leaving a, about a one inch opening or two inch opening. And then you can have a real refrigerator in an RV that's the size of your average RV refrigerator. This one's a dead model. 
it had an absorption leak, so we have removed it. Okay, now, as you've seen, each one of those refrigerators, they function a little different. Now, I'm using this camper as an example, and we're getting done with it. We're doing a whole lot of nice stuff, but, and you can go look at the other videos. In fact, look up in the corner, boom, I'll put a spot um, where you can go see the video where I originally got this camper. Now, and other videos that followed it, but... You see how simple it is to do, and you got to make sure that you understand that it's going to take a day and sometimes longer for this to stabilize at a temperature that's safe. Now, she's down at about 63. I don't know if you can read that. But this one's been on about an hour and a half, and it's just now gone from 75 to 63. So it takes a while for these to stabilize, and you're looking at 24 hours minimum. 36, I would say you, you're, you're a pretty safe bet on where you're at. But if you own an RV refrigerator and you allow temperature to exceed 48 degrees Fahrenheit for over 24 hours, throw out everything. Don't try to save anything because bacterial content will go fast and grow. the medium will grow very fast at above 48 degrees. You want to keep this below 40, below 5 degrees Celsius. You want to maintain your refrigerator temperature at around 5 degrees, your freezer at negative 2 or 0 or negative 2 Celsius, or 10 degrees negative Fahrenheit like, I, like mine. And down here, I keep mine at about 35 degrees normally. Now, that's the good thing about, like I showed you at the beginning, the tape on the back it'll help you stabilize this instead of changing it like I, if, if i tape the back of this during the winter time i won't have to change this and if it comes up a little bit i just barely have to you know call for more electricity or gas that's the thing you have to be aware of secondary on all rv refrigerators bleach clean on a regular basis your seals you'll understand that later why you want to do that the big thing is is that rv refrigerators because they have a warm outside wall and a cold inside bacteria will want to grow on that seal. So y'all make sure you bleach clean your seals um, with a basically two capfuls of bleach to a cup of water or a cup and a half of water. Just use a tissue or a paper towel. There you go. All right, now back over here on the back, you want to make sure this entire thing is clear. No debris, nothing touching these at all, nothing nothing touching this so you see the insulation is about four inches back from this and if it gets close to it get you a rod or something and push it back away from it if you have insulation in yours nothing under the bottom at all zero don't allow nothing there and that will save you a lot of problems and you want to make sure when you take that vent off get a ladder get up there take that vent off be safe about it you want to make sure when you take that top vent off that the screen is intact if it doesn't have a screen get you a piece of screen or something and put over the top of it reconnect it redo it um it usually will just pinch fit so you'll just take aluminum screen and fold it and put it on there and then put the top back on some of those have metal tabs you have to bend back to pull the metal top off the older ones they are real bad in the eastern part of the united states of getting pollen plugging up the screens and people's refrigerators burning out so service it it's a good thing to do the best thing to clean that with the pollen is just regular alcohol and once you've got it clean you don't have to really worry and if you're worried about putting a fan i'll put a link that has a fan in it but most of the time unless you're in a real hot area you don't need a fan you just need this completely clean always keep it clean when you take that top off take a shot back look inside clean the whole top of that refrigerator make sure the walls are free around it and you don't really need a fan but if you do look for that link below and that uh it'll have everything in on a page and i'll put that there for you including the newest model of these vents that do circulate a lot more air and i'll put them on there too but um, as it sits right now we're finishing up the trailer and our next project is right here we're going to be putting an electric element in here where this drain was. It's a 425, so it doesn't put a whole lot of strain on your system. Let's see if I can get that where you can read that. I don't know if you can see that or not. 425 watts, 120 volts. Just requires this and the fittings you see. And then we will mount a standard water heater thermostat control where you can use it. But 
All the sheet metal is going to make its new box, and then we're going to inject it with foam. Watch for that video that's coming up next, and um, y'all stay tuned. We got more coming on and happening to this cool old trailer, camper, freebie, whatever you want to call it. All right, Patricia, there you go. There's just some facts and figures, and stay tuned. I'll show you how to make that work a lot cheaper. Thank <laughs> you.